All right, guys, welcome back. Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. I read the whole report. Guys, GameStop report got released today. Funny thing, I asked for it during the live session, and then it shows up this afternoon. Everyone's reading it front to back. It's 44 pages, a lot of graphs, a lot of simple text. If you don't know much about the markets, you should go ahead and read it. It might inform you about some things that you should know. A lot of us that read it, we understand it word for word. We're not surprised by anything it said. What did it really say, though, at the end? It basically told you this. If you're reading it word for word, it's going to tell you this. Shorts never covered. These short sellers were not buying the stock. We were. And retail investors drove the price through the roof, and they had to halt it. Position only closed because, hey, when the daddy comes and payment for order flow is the way you make your money, that's what you're looking at. SEC, do I fault you? Kind of. SEC, it took you nine months to get this report out. I know that you manage over 12,000 or you watch over 12,000 companies out here that are doing nefarious things. And additionally, you've had 17 commission reports already put out this year. But this staff level report was not as it was not a report based off of policy change. It was more just statement of fact. So that's what the framework was of the report. If you guys want to know what it is, the GameStop report um, that shorts never covered. It said in there plain as day. That's not what was driving this price up. So that right there already makes me excited to open up tomorrow, look at the markets, and see how many smart people there are that understand why we're in this damn stock. Now, additionally, they let you know that the volume itself has increased crazy in that week from the, what was it, to, uh, January 22nd to January 27th. You had, or actually they had a 16-day run, over 100 million shares traded back and forth on average. 100 million shares, guys. We're trading at 1 million shares right now. 1 to 2 if we're lucky. Guys, we're at 1% of the volume that it needs on this stock. Where is it? 226% was the short interest. 100% was the short interest for the whole month of January. You had more shares in this planet, on this planet, trading on this market than ever existed on this stock. And where have they gone? We don't know. The report didn't tell you. But I know how I feel about it, and that's why I keep buying it. And I'm sure all of you have kept buying it. There's over 4 million new accounts in January that went and bought GameStop, guys. So if those accounts still hold GameStop, even to the tune of five shares each, that's 20 million. We own the float without a doubt. Remember, institutional ownership was over 98.6% in March. Just think, how much do you own, how much do I own, and how much do we keep buying? That's the report. Now, there was zero recommendations, like I said. Uh, they're not trying to do that, but they are telling you this. The gamification of trading, retail trading, is real. And I can give you this example. Uh, they tell you the confetti falling whenever, whenever you do something great on Robinhood, whenever you acquire something. But I would tell you, all these guys out there for all these months that was pushing out Webull free shares, Robinhood free shares, trying to give you bits of Tesla, bits of crypto, all these guys who give you free things to join. It would be the equivalent of like buying a car to get a rebate, right? Oh, I'm going to buy this vehicle because it has a rebate. You know who, what cars don't have rebates? Good cars. Good cars don't have rebates. And I would tell you, good platforms that you buy your shares on don't have rebates either. They don't give you free shares. When I joined up with Fidelity, they gave me nothing. They just told me, guess what? These are commission-free trades, and you can sign up with me. And that's what I believe in. Payment for order flow is real. Now, I don't need to go out there and see any affiliates through any other YouTubers to join. I know how I feel about it. But they're not paying for the trades themselves. They're paying for that traffic. Because what do they really do with your traffic, guys? Anybody know what they do with it? If I can get you on margin, this is how I can make money off of my account, period. And that's what this report's telling you, that these guys, these brokers that are out there, the middleman, they are literally pushing your orders to Citadel, to whomever who pays for it, but just so they can also get money off of margin, interest that they're doing, and that payment for it. This is how they run their business. This is how they make their money, because commission-free trades are real, and it's hard to compete out in this world. And yes, I know Robinhood looks great. I know Webull looks great. And maybe Fidelity doesn't. But I'm sticking with Fidelity because when I saw this report, they said nothing bad about it. Apex Clearing has over 6 million accounts that they clear through for both, uh, both brokerages. Apex Clearing is a member of the OCC. Guys, if you see the problem with all these, all these stocks and all the shares that are out there, it is just, it's an abundance of options that don't even exist. There are more options written on these stocks. Certainly GameStop, uh, the OCC allows it. How could the hell can you keep writing contracts without locating shares? And the fact that you can locate shares and you don't have to report it. I mean, you can just say, yeah, I, I know where to get 100 shares and just make it up at this point. And I, I don't call it naked 
na- it's not naked shorting, right? It's not naked anything. It's naked call contracts. They actually have them out there. It's actually a definition. But the report talks about it in detail. I want everyone to read it, man. I want you guys to read it because you guys are going to catch up on a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. And are we right? We'd hate to think we're right. I mean, I'd hate to think I'm right. And I, and I said this months ago. If I'm right, then the whole world's coming down, right? So the report tells you that, but I'm telling you guys, we have a long way to go. Long way to go. Hey, that, um, what was it? Iraq Intelligence Committee Commission? Iraq Intelligence Commission. That's what it was. In 2004 for weapons of mass destruction. It took like 15 years before they told you there was no weapons of mass destruction. The Warren Commission, which was done in 1963 when JFK got assassinated, didn't come out with an answer until what? Oliver Stone made a movie on JFK and basically told you everything was this or that. You know, Lee Harvey Oswald couldn't have done it himself because then he would need a magic bullet and two shooters right on the grassy knoll. Things like that finally come to light 20 years, 10 years down the road. So I'm going to be waiting for that. Deepwater Horizon had a report, a commission report. There's been tons. There's been over 6,300 congressional commission reports. This is the SEC's little staff report. So it's nothing. It's nothing on those levels. But I'm telling you, the manipulation of it and the historical... Pre- the When we're going to go back and we're going to look in the history books, we're going to look at this. This is the report that's going to start it all. But where are we going to end? Where's the congressional report? Where's the one that the actual you know people on Capitol Hill doing those hearings? What was the outcome of that? Nothing. Because whenever I look at these things, whenever I look at like the 9-11 commission, I think that everyone's doing it for hot air. Everyone's just doing it because they have to do something. But what can we do to combat that? Well, one, we can remember a couple things. We can remember that the 226% short interest is somewhere because it's definitely not on the stock. The volume's not there to cover that amount, and the price action didn't represent that. So if that's the case, I'm still holding my shares, definitely, right? Um, I I love GameStop. I'm not going anywhere off of it. I've been going with this stock for nine months, eight months now. I'm thick, and I love the way Ryan Cohen and the crew is doing it. They even uh, even talk about Ryan Cohen in the report. Now, just because he he made an announcement or GameStop made the announcement, he was on the board of directors and he was buying in, he was doing an investment. The volume and the price increased the most it ever increased in their lifetime when they made that announcement. Well, guess what, guys? We have no volume and no news right now on this stock at this price. What do you the hell do you think is going to happen to this stock? When they make an announcement, when they make, when this happens again, when they actually get to do what they, what you want a company to do, they can't right now. We're literally investing in this company blind, based off of good faith and good news that we pass back and forth with, with each other. We have a different type of community. When we say diamond hands, we're not calling each other apes. I don't know who the hell ever calls themselves that. I call myself a retail investor that has diamond hands. I'm never selling this, these shares, and I'm going to hold on to them because I want to know what's real and what's not. Is this company real? I hope it is. I know it is. I have faith in it. And I'm I'm drill, I'm drilling myself just down that path. My kids are gonna know what the hell happened. You're gonna know what the hell happened because we have these videos to call back on them. But guys, I don't fault anyone out there. The SEC's trying to do their job. They came out with a shitty report. All right. It's fun to read. Go out there, get it done. When I say that word shitty, I don't mean to call it out that way, but here's how it works, guys. When you wait nine months to do a report with zero recommendations and you basically just put your hands up to say, you know what, this happened. They halted it. Let me know when you're actually going to put feet to the fire, when you're actually going to put somebody in jail or you're actually going to put you're going to hold somebody accountable. At this point, Vlad's laughing. Ken's laughing. Steve Cohen's laughing. Everyone's laughing. Right. Even Ruben, uh, the the other guy, Plunkett, Plunkett, whatever the hell his name is. I can't think right now. I'm just telling you guys, there's people out there that are the true criminals of this financial world, and they need to be held accountable. This report does not do that. But I will see you on the other side of it, because that wedge doesn't look any better than it's ever looked. It actually is amazing on a technical breakout coming, what, that second week of November? That's the way the timeline works. Could it come out earlier than that? Could it come out tomorrow morning? If there's another smart people out there that are actually reading the same thing I'm reading, I wish you guys the best of luck, guys. GameStop's not going anywhere. I'm going to keep holding the stock, and I encourage everyone else to. But this report is real. And if you read it right, it tells you they never covered. So what do you want to do? GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. I'll see you around, millionaires.